All right, it is time to talk about my puppies. Well, and other animals too. This is going to be my update for the It's Panning Cats and Dogs project. Before I get started, you know I'm going to ask you to do all the things. You know what they are. Okay, so this is It's Panning Cats and Dogs Project Pan. That's the name of it, but the hashtag that we use on this is Panning Pets PP, and pets is plural in there. This is a project that was created by the dynamic duo of Deb B and Danny from Danny's Makeup. They did this in collab with the Fantastic Ladies Group on Facebook. Um, they decided that this was going to run October 22nd of 22 to 23. And the reason they picked that day is because that is National Make a Dog's Day. I mean, come on, what could be better than that? So this is supposed to um, update monthly on the 22nd. Yeah. It's a roulette style project starting with six prompts. Okay, yeah, these things are fluid in my world. We know this. But those are the things you need to know. Make sure you check the description box because that's how you're going to find Deb, Danny, and the fantastic ladies, as always. Now for this, I have been puttering away for the longest time with several things out of this palette. Okay, so this is the Nomad Home for the Holidays palette. That was a Christmas release, and because of what Nomad did with the palette and how they named things, I basically have been putting this in for multiple prompts. Well, I'm still working on all these things. So we're going to talk about which ones are for what. So the first one that I have in is for Pug. This is an item with cute packaging. Well, I don't know. It's really hard to get you guys to see all the cute little paw prints all around the edge because it's so glittery it's hard to focus. So for that one, I brought in this shade here, Kaiser. And this is... Oh, wow. I can't even see that. It's the peach shade right there. I got to wipe. You know, we're going to be swatching. So there it is on my hand. Now, I brought this in for 11 uses, and believe it or not, I've actually completed that. So that one's rolling out as far as prompts go. The palette's still staying. So the next one here is Boxer, and that was an item that was still in the package. And for this, I kept the package. Of course, I don't have it here. It's in my closet. I thought it was in Arizona, but I did bring it with. It has a cute little doggy face cutout wearing a Santa hat. So you see this part through that cutout with a black box. It's very cute. So for that, I brought in this shade here, Family, which is the yellow shade. Jeez, you guys are getting such a glare. I don't know if you're even... Okay. So that is what Family looks like. I'll try and remember to hold the palette a little bit better so that you guys can see. With this, I am now at eight uses, and I actually have it... Okay, I'll, I'll try and pop in a picture, because I do have it on today, and I actually... I'm not a yellow person, but I like this. I've been using it with a really fluffy brush and kind of using it in that transition area, and for me, the shade is working really well. So I am quite pleased with that. I'm running out of room. Okay, the next one I have is for catnip, an item that makes you lose your mind. Alrighty, for that, of course, I brought in this absolutely gorgeous pink because it's gorgeous and it's pink. And this one is called Shadow. Now, remember, some of these are named after the dogs that the Nomad employees walked when they did their volunteering with the shelter. Do you remember the tie-in? I have a playlist of every project that I do, so if you go back and watch the old videos, you'll get the whole rundown on this Nomad palette. All right, so seven out of 11 uses on that. Then Siamese, they have the loudest purrs, so this is a product that makes you purr with delight. For that, okay, this one is a dull one. I brought in the purple, because purple, it's me. And this one is named Jack. Now, believe it or not, because I wear so many purples, I've only used this three times. I kind of get to get my butt in gear. It is, of course, lovely. Try to get it off my finger there. Then for treats, something that you purchase specifically to treat yourself. Well, this I did to treat myself, but also because of it having the animal charity tie-in. 
that always touches my heart. So um, with this, I brought in Fur Babies, which is the green shade. Oh, okay. My lights feel like they're switching on you there. That was weird, but that's what that looks like. And there it is on my wrist. <sighs> yeah. All right. So three uses on that. Then we have Chihuahua, a product that the beauty, beauty community won't stop yapping about. And when I introduced this, I was actually referencing Nomad as a company because of all of the releases that they just kept pushing them out. And that was like on my feed constantly. So I figured that was appropriate. And I brought in the shade Buzz, which is the blue shade here. So pretty. So, so pretty. So that is Buzz. I have gotten three of my 11 uses on that. Okay, then Rottweiler, a product you were scared of at first but fell in love with. Maybe. I may be changing my mind. I might be lying to you, actually. Um, I brought in the shade Friends, which is this red shade. And, okay, look at that. It's like an orange red. So, yes, it scares me half to death. I don't necessarily think it's the most flattering shade on me. But it is pretty. It just is a little bit orangey for my tastes. Eh, I've gotten one use on it. We'll get to some more hungover vampire looks and I'll use it more often. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm supposed to be getting to 11. Now, here is the tie-in. This is, was my master plan. So for Dalmatian, I brought in a Vander, which is the white one. And I brought in this one, Dusty, which is the black one, for the prompt Dalmatian and because I had a Dalmatian and you saw pictures of Cami last month. So these I put in for 12 because if you total the number of uses on the palette, if I can complete them all, it's 101 uses. So it kind of tied back that way too. See? Master plan. Master plan. So we've got black and white. So now... The white is a really pretty sparkly one, and that I've used three times. I've actually gotten five uses on this black. I've been using it as an eyeliner because oh, that's not coming off. Because it's really, really a strong black. I can use it as an outer corner too, um, but, oh man, now I'm making a mess. I shouldn't have done that. But, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a hardcore black, you guys, so probably going to stick with eyeliner on that, but I'm okay with that. As long as I get uses, I'm fine. All right. So when in my craziness, what I decided to do, because I was not getting anywhere with this, I needed more things in the project or I needed to get myself moving faster. I brought in Maine Coon. And with that, um, you've seen pictures of Trixie and Jez, and I'm probably popping up a couple of more. So I brought in and they were from the same litter. So I brought in one for them, and then I brought in one for the prompt, which is the reason that I didn't bring in three, because I counted Jez and Trixie as one, kind of. So I brought in Professor Patch and Ditsy Thunder, and these are also both in my eye look today. Ditsy Thunder is actually the corner shade, and then I took this, and where I stopped with the yellow on the inner, I continued with that on the outer. So we'll give you... Professor Patch and Ditsy Thunder. Okay, we're going to just start going down the arm. Oh, okay. So, Professor Patch is actually really light, and it's like a mint green, but it does have some yellow in it, too, because of the fact that it's marbled. So, I don't know. It seemed to work for me. I have used each of those one time, which you are seeing right this right now with this look. All right, then I brought in Labrador Golden Retriever Hunting Dogs, a product you had to hunt down or was hard to find. Well, these were limited edition. These were from an animal charity bundle from Lethal. So I did specifically go out and hunt these down to get these four shades. And so for that, I brought in, I think it's pronounced Mercredi. It's M-E-R-C-R-E-D-I. Yeah, so it's it's not Mercedes. It's got to be Mercredi. And this, okay, I don't know if you guys, okay, no, you're seeing it as kind of brown. It actually is an olive green with a pink marble. 
and I think you're seeing it a little bit better there, but when I put it on, it looks like a, there's like a little bit of a pink tint with a brown. It does not look olive on me. I don't know why. Normally olives work really well for me, but that one for some reason just kind of comes brown. I've used that once also. And then we have got Pitbull. So this is a product brand that you like, love, but it has a bad rep or negative reviews. I didn't do it for that reason. I did it because this is actually named after a pit bull. And this is Mika. So that's the pinkish one in the corner. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell. It's got some purple in it. And I think you're getting a pretty good, pretty good view of all of that. So it's also very pale. And I also have this on today. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to even see that. Okay, seriously. What is wrong with me? Well, you can kind of see the shine. I don't know that you can actually see the color. But even though it's a shimmer, it is working really well for me as like a setting shade. And I like having a little bit of a pink as a base. So I'm good with that. I have used that three out of the five times. Did I tell you I put these, these four in for five uses each? I don't know if I said that. Anyway, if there's any questions about how these were named, I actually, in my... Um, Last update, so June, I included the blurbs with the pictures of the animals for which those lethal shades are named. So if you didn't see that one, go ahead and check that one out so that you'll understand where all of this comes from. All right, now that is everything I have in the project. And it didn't really, I mean, it's a lot of shades, but it didn't seem like I had a lot of things in this project. And from what I was looking at, from what I had seen that I have finished, the ladies gave us 42 prompts, and this is only going until October. It's already July, and I'm not halfway through yet. So we're going to bring in a couple of things. Even though I only had one rollout, we're going to bring in a few things. Now, I don't think it's any secret that I have dogs. You've seen them in every single thumbnail here, and in most of my videos, all of my videos from Arizona, you get to see the girls. My girls are beagle and Springer mixes. They were um, mislabeled originally. They were an oops from a beagle farm. They were fostered out to St. Francis Animal Rescue, and I got them through an adoption event at a local pet smart. And they were listed as beagle cocker, but they are not. They are part Springer. They are not cocker. Wrong kind of spaniel. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the prompt for beagle for my girls. And so for this, this is supposed to be a scented item. And I thought, well, okay, I'm bringing in Emmy and Lucy. Emmy's the tricolored one. Lucy's the black and white one. She's my Snoopy dog. I decided that what I'm going to do is bring in, holy moly, a stack of fragrance. It just seemed to make the most sense. So I have got two of these Dolce and, oh, jeez. Nope, right side up. <laughs> Dolce & Gabbana Light Blues. They're slightly different packaging, but they are the same thing. So we're going to bring these in. And then I've got two of the YSL perfumes. Can you? Okay, La, La Homme, I believe, and Black Opium, which we know we love that. And I don't know if that's a men's, women, or unisex, but it smells good to me, so I'm going to use it. And then I'm going to bring in... These two Valentino fragrances, these are both Born in Roma. They're both Coral Fantasy, so they're not the one that I... No, I have Voce Vida, I think. Um, but, okay, this one is Donna, and this one is Oma? Omo? U-O-M-O. -O. Not quite sure. So, I am bringing these two in because I've never tried them. So, there's three out of the six that I actually have not tried before, and I don't know what they smell like. Or what they smell like on me. So, that'll be interesting. So that's what's going to come in for my girls. And I realize that they won't end up staying in the project as long as some of my other pets do. But you guys do get to see them frequently and you get to see pictures all the time. So I don't feel too bad about that. Not really bad, at least. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to bring in Sharpay. So this is supposed to be a skincare item that prevents wrinkles. All right, so I kind of fudged a touch on this, and I got this little sample from Peach and Lily, and this is the Peptide Pro Firming Moisturizer. Now, I figure that 
thing okay so as you age you lose elasticity that's part of the thing with wrinkles that your skin doesn't bounce back so i figured that bringing in a firming moisturizer the idea of that is that it's supposed to help prevent wrinkles by keeping the skin more toned i i mean that's the general idea yeah that's what i'm bringing in so obviously this is going to be a finish item um and i can recycle the box i've got recycling sitting next to me today that's nice okay then um I'm going to bring in Corgi. So this is Butt Wiggles, a gel product or something that jiggles. For this, I have this sample of, this is the Bioma brand, and this is the Creamy Jelly Cleanser. And I figure if it's a jelly product, that means it should jiggle, but we can't see through it. So I don't know. It's sealed. But we're going to go on the assumption that since it's a jelly, it's going to jiggle. I don't know why I put it back in the box. I'm going to bring that into finish too. And I didn't actually even tell you with these what size they were. I mean, you know they're tiny. So this one is um, the Peach and Lily. This is the 0.16 ounce, 5 milliliter. The Bioma Cleanser is 0.33. And you can't even see anything off of this. Oh, it's backwards anyway. 0.33 ounce, 10 milliliter. Been a long day just roll with it. All right, then the next thing I am bringing in is Cat Tree. So this is an item with asymmetrical, pack asymmetrical packaging or stackable products. I went with packaging because I got this in um, one of the Sephora favorites collection sets, whatever. So this is the Rose Ink Blush in Delphine. And this does have a mirror on it, I think. I think that's a mirror. Yes, there's a plastic thing covering and I never take those off. But that's what that looks like. That's a little bit scary. That's a little bit orange. So, oh, and that's a cream product. That's a really, really interesting cream product. That's what it looks like on my finger. Um, oh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on my arm. But I thought I would give this a shot to find out if this is going to work for me or not. I don't do tons of orangey peachy oh well there it is right there on the bottom but being a cream product the way that I do those is that I do my foundation I do any cream products and then I powder over and then go over with powder products and I thought this might not be a bad thing to have for some of those warmer looks when I don't want to be using the pink because the only other cream blush that I have is in the alley-oop stack and that's a very pink blush so i thought well, we'll give this a shot and see if this is something that i could actually use if this does not work for me it's going to go to debbie <laughs> because my cousin has darker skin than me so i'm just going to do this for five uses just to kind of get a feel for it see if it's something that i actually will use want to keep around or if it's something that i should pass on to someone who will maybe get more use out of it or have it go more, go more quickly that came out funny. All right, so that is everything that I am doing for the project. But you know that means that we're doing music moment. Oh, and um, just to clarify, I did talk to Deb. So those of you that do watch a lot of my videos, uh, you will have seen my um, Happy Hour Project Pan where I went bananas and just brought in like a bajillion things within a couple palettes. And so uh, Deb and I were Marco Poloing after she saw the video and she's like, yeah, don't worry about it. You can go ahead and break the rules on that. I realized that that's where I was with my cats and dogs project and that's my project and I'm not going out that way. So she did. I haven't watched her video yet because I'm behind. Hopefully by the time this goes up, I'll have actually seen it. But she said she kind of did the same thing with that project or with this project because this is another one of hers. And I thought, all right, so that means I don't have to stick to the six prompts on this one either because Deb gave me permission. <laughs> As long as Danny doesn't get mad at me, we're in good shape here. All right, now, on to the music moment. I could have done animal-themed music, and I didn't. Instead, I have been kind of going back and forth with some oddball things. I've been doing, like, some kind of, like, alt, jeez oh, Louise, alt-indie type of stuff, and I've also been giving you some blues stuff, or maybe not. I, I don't know how things are going to go up. But I decided that I wanted to give you blues today. 
And the one that I am going to be bringing to you is a very long video. This is a video I, ha I have seen, but I think it's an incredible video while you take certain things into account. So what I am going to be putting in the description box is a live version of Am I the One by Beth Hart. Now, let's talk a little bit about Beth Hart because this is going to kind of explain some of this to you. So she is from, oh man, now I got to figure out where she, she's from LA. That's where she was born, Los Angeles, California. She was born in 72, so she's just a couple years younger, three years younger than me. And um, she is still current. She has been active since she was about 15. She started um, like playing in clubs, ended up kind of putting a couple guys together in a band with her. And uh, she did put out an album, and I'm going to give you the name of the band, the whole band thing. The first thing she put out was in 1993 and it's Beth Hart and the Ocean of Souls. So that was kind of the name of the band too, or Beth Hart band maybe. I'm not entirely certain, but there's more to the story. So what happened was when she was 19, she went on Star Search, which was an Ed McMahon show. Okay. 93. So this is a while ago. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, she either won with Am I the one of like her original version of it? Or it was what she got to do as her original song. I'm not a hundred percent clear on that. Now, yes, she did win that, but she didn't get a recording contract out of it, which is very unlike what happens today with the music shows that you're seeing on TV, the reality ones. Now, usually with that, there's music contracts involved and the top people are getting recording contracts, even if they're not necessarily the winner. What happened to her, unfortunately, Star Search was a really broad show and it was one of the early reality things. Now, she went on as a vocalist, obviously, but because there was a stigma attached to that show, it actually hurt her musically as far as her getting a contract. She was also fairly young. She started doing this very young. She was a 15-year-old girl when she started, and at 19 is when she's winning, and then she was, I think, 21 when the album actually came out. And I want to say that is the album that Am I the One is on. I don't know if I'm 100% right on that. Um, oh, man. I know it's in here somewhere. Yes, it is off of the Beth Hart and Ocean of Souls album from 93. It, uh later appeared as her first official on her first official record immortal also now she has done a lot of original stuff but she's also done a lot of covers throughout her career she has worked a whole lot with joe Mon bonamassa they have done live cds and they've also done live dvds of some of their concerts and i want i don't even know how many times they've worked together i couldn't even tell you but she did actually start to break through um, with her second solo album, which is called Screaming for My Supper from 1999. So there was a period in there where she wasn't really gaining a lot of traction. But from there, it's kind of gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And she is widely recognized, you guys. I mean, she is very admired currently in the cadre of live musicians, female blues musicians, female blues singers. She's not a one trip pony. She plays guitar, bass, cello, piano, and something else. I don't even know what else she plays. Drums, maybe? I don't know. In addition to the singing. So there are several, obviously there are several songs that I love by her, but this one I'm bringing to you a lot because of the video. Now, one of the other things you need to take into account is that when she did win Star Search and it didn't turn into a recording thing for her, she did struggle. She actually has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and it is something that she is medicated for. Before all of this happened, she hadn't gotten a diagnosis. She was struggling. So she's having manic. She's having depressive episodes. So she was self-medicating, and she talks about this. So... She is very, very open and honest about the fact that she was, in addition to having these mental health issues, then turning to things that 
she shouldn't have, which made her health even more precarious. And it then, of course, affected her behavior and her moods and all that other fun stuff, too. But she is happy and healthy now. So I'm not going to I'm not going to talk too much about that. But know that when you see this video, some of that was going on. All right. Just so, because she she doesn't look tremendously healthy in the video, but the power Holy, she's been compared to Janis Joplin. She did, I'd rather go blind for the Kennedy Center honors. Um, oh man, what else has she done? Her most recent thing, and I don't know if it's 22 or 23. Let me find out. Let's get to the discography. Oh, come on. Her, okay, the Led Zeppelin tribute. So it's a tribute to Led Zeppelin is the name of the album. It is entirely a cover album that she did. That actually did come out in 2022. Now, I want to say is it's War in My Mind, which has Bad Woman Blues. I'm not sure. Her discography is somewhat extensive. I mean, she's been putting out albums fairly consistently, like every few years since 1993. 93, 96, 99, etc. And like I said, there are one, two, three with Joe Bonamassa. There's some beautiful stuff off of that, but there are, there's so much of her stuff I love, you guys. You're probably going to get, like, I'll do a week-long Beth Hart music moment thing at some point, I'm sure, to get you a bunch of her other music. But, now, I talked about her not getting the recognition and having to struggle. When the industry started to really recognize her, that didn't come until 2012. And since then, she has gotten awards 2012, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, and already in 23. And these are always like blues related. So they're either blues music awards or it's for um, one of female blues artists, blues power award Best Blues Rock Album, B.B. Um, King Entertainer of the Year, she's won Contemporary Blues Female Artist, Instrumentalist, Vocalist, Live Recording. I mean, the list goes on. So that is, I think, everything that I want to tell you right now about Beth Hart and this song. And like I said, I am linking what I think is probably, it's an incredibly long video, but I think it's probably one of the most expressive and really shows off her voice, her power, the tether that music had for her to keep her sane, to keep her holding on. And like I said, in this video, she may not look the best, but I think that it is, in a lot of ways, it is the music and the artistry within her that kind of helped save her. So I think that's why another reason I find this video powerful. So with all of that, I probably shouldn't have told you that. I probably should have just let you watch it and then put a disclaimer later saying, hey, by the way, but whatever. I think it's one of her greatest performances of this song. So that's what you're getting. Thank you for spending your time with me. I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me ramble oh so much as always everything is in my description box as it always is for your viewing listening pleasure for you to get to the ladies for you to get to the fantastic ladies so until next time everybody thank you so much see ya bye